Hi everyone, my name is Mark Bonner and I'm dentist for uh, 40 years now and I want to talk about how we can cure periodontal disease, gum disease. So we've made some uh, studies with group of dentists and I want to share with you how we can uh, do cure this uh, periodontitis problem. So we know it does affect a lot of uh, population uh, majority of the population, more than 50%, and many cases uh, are very uh, severe disease uh, to the population. So what happens is, is you have uh, bone loss, bone osteolysis, and then uh, gum retraction, periodontal pockets, tooth uh, mobility, and much inflammation, uh, bleeding, as you can see here, and halitosis, and then you have tooth loss. So this can be uh, very early in your life or in the middle of your life, but it does happen in uh, more than half of the population. So periodontitis we know now does affect uh, probably your uh, systemic uh, uh, general health. So uh, many times you have a worse problem with cardiovascular disease, chronic pulmonary disease, pneumonia, kidney disease, arthritis, uh, cognitive impairment, obesity, diabetes is a uh, more problem, uh, metabolic syndrome, uh, some oral uh, cancer associated with the periodontitis, and preterm uh, birth and low birth weight in a uh, woman. So this uh, is the thing is uh, associated with uh, periodontal disease. Now what we do is we use a microscope to uh, look at what is happening into your mouth. So if we take a little bit of uh, microbes just uh, inside the, the gum, uh, on the top of the gum, where the disease is, we can see a lot of difference. So a healthy uh, patient would show some little bacteria like this. So this is 1000 magnification. So the bacteria we see in healthy patient is uh, like dots, little dots, and lines, cocci and filaments, we say. This is non motile and although we see the epithelial cell, uh, those are normal cells of uh, the gum when we get those little bacteria. It takes uh, two minutes and then we have this on the microscope uh, every uh, time we want and there's no pain, no problem to do this. It's very easy uh, technique. But you have to have a dentist who has a microscope. Now in periodontal disease, the biofilm or the microbiota is very different. So what we see most of the time is motile bacteria and also we see parasites. So those parasites are like those here. Those are amoebas, amtamoeba gingivalis, we believe, and we have studies about, about them. And many times, uh, or most of the time, we see uh, white cells, which are uh, polymorphonuclear um, white cells, uh, which are the um, cell of the infection. They come to help you, but still they uh, persist in the sulcus. And this is particular uh, biofilm uh, when you have uh, periodontal disease. You see the presence of the amoeba and most uh, of the situation. So if we look at a normal patient with normal gum, no disease, we take a little bit of a microbe just uh, along the gum here, and what we find typically would be like this when we look at the video movie with video film. So we see dots in line, dots in line, cocci bacteria and filaments, uh, cocci filament associated ones, about no motility, just little waving a little bit, but just cocci and filament, so dots and lines. So this is normal biofilm of uh, every patient. You have longer filament and epithelial cell, like we were saying. So this is very characteristic. Also, we have association of dots and lines here that may form some uh, calculus later on. But those are normal uh, microbes in a healthy patient. Uh, see also there's no inflammatory cell, no white cell, no red cell. This is normal biofilm. 
Now, if we go to the periodontal disease, we will see those parasites, and we will see those white cells here, white cell, white cell with the nucleus. This is the amoeba parasite. It's, it has a lobal pod here, pseudopod. It has a specific nucleus, about four micron uh, diameter, and you see the pseudopod. Is the amoeba many times is moving within this biofilm. So this is very characteristic of the periodontal disease. So we did a study to see are those uh, amoeba entities uh, really antamoeba gingivalis? Is it real? So we take some um, human, um, some antamoeba genus, and we uh, want to see if it is really the uh, antamoeba gingivalis we know that is associated to uh, periodontitis disease. So we want to see if it's okay. So we did primer design like this here, and uh, primers we see is very specific uh, to antamoeba gingivalis, and is different of other uh, amoebas we see in um, intestinal disease. So we check for if the method is specific to gingivalis, and effecti effectively it is uh, specific to antamoeba gingivalis. Also, the sensitivity of the method is uh, correct, so we can use this for our study. And then we uh, go to, uh, we went to 139 patients in eight clinics, another uh, clinics in France, and uh, we make sure we see if those patients uh, have the parasite. So sensitivity uh, was high compared to clinical uh, microscopy, and we can say that antimoeba gingivalis really is associated to uh, periodontitis. Uh, we did a second study, a more clinical study, uh, because when we treat periodontitis, we really want to get rid of the parasites. So we did this antiparasite treatment in periodontal uh, disease, and we want to know also in peri-implantitis, uh, what happened after a 12-month uh, study with this treatment. So the purpose was to confirm the presence of parasite and see what are the results removing those parasites uh, with the patient. So we take biofilm examination on uh, 632 uh, periodontal patients and <coughs> we found 99% were positive for antamoeba gingivalis, this parasite, and we found a second uh, uh, parasite, which is Trichomonostenax, in 22% uh, of the patient affected with periodontal disease. Uh, so, uh, and this was observed by uh, uh, dentists, uh, expert in microscopy uh, dentists. So, if I can share with you uh, the biofilm we look when we look at the microscope, this is what we see at. 100 magnification. So those are the microbes uh, within the gingival, and we observe those trophozoites. So those trophozoites are here. So you see there are a lot of them. Maybe here in this biofilm that would make about one millimeter large, we would see more than 50 uh, parasites going around like this here. So this is uh, lower magnification, and you can see this on YouTube, you have some more film you can uh, look at. Uh, we see this antamoeba gingivalis, so it is a very big parasite, this is higher magnification, 1000 magnification, and we can see it can locomotive, it can go and uh, get to his prey moving within the biofilm. Uh, this is a lobopode here, pseudopode, the nucleus, uh, and this is the uroid, which is uh, one of uh, descriptive uh, pathologic uh, characteristics of the amoeba. Uh, what we can see, most important thing, is the amoeba, which is right here. See the amoeba within the pus. I mean, this is white cell, white cell, white cell, PMN, PMN, PMN. You see the amoeba, which is uh, clearly uh, eating. It's just uh, eating the interior of the PMN. So you see this 
uh, uh, polymorphonuclear neutrophil here that has lost its nucleus. Nucleus was in there, and you see the tree part like this living one here. So you see the, the nucleus is gone and has been suctioned literally uh, by the parasite, Antemoeba gingivalis. So Antemoeba gingivalis, this parasite, nourishes from live uh, normal neutrophil that try to defend yourself within the disease. So this is a very important fact. Also we see the amoeba that is moving. After five minutes we can see some um, channels within the biofilm and we see the amoeba goes from there to there, from there to there, from there to there. So it's moving at a certain speed within the gum disease. So what you think of your gum, inside your gum, you have those parasites just moving around within your gum and uh, helping destroying your bone. Uh, many times when the disease is active, we see like nests of those parasites. So it's not only one, but it's maybe eight, 10, uh, 20 or more uh, living within this uh, pus again, neutrophil, neutrophil, and one, one amoeba, two, three, four, five. It literally is a nest uh, and it is living at the bottom of your gum. And the only thing you can do is have a dentist with the microscope have a look at your biofilm within this gum, take a little piece of it, and put it on the slide and look at it on the microscope. So uh, we see also those amoeba, they live with the bacteria, like actinomyces here. It's forming like a, a living thing. And then you have the white cell and you have the amoeba within this uh, harmony with the bacteria we don't want uh, no more. Um, also we see this amoeba can reproduce. So you have the amoeba, Antemoeba gingivalis here, the nucleus here, uh, chromatin and karyosome in the center, and you see it just formed the baby uh, parasite. So the minuta form of the amoeba has just separated from the mother here, and it went into the sulcus. So it reproduced by sissiparite, and you can have a second uh, parasite. Uh, you see this young parasite will go uh, a little larger and the nucleus will be forming like this one here with chromatin and then get a little more uh, developed and then will be like adult Antemoeba gingivalis with this characteristic uh, nucleus. So there's no, uh, w there's no way we can uh, not think it is not this parasite. So Clearly, it is a parasite in periodontal disease. Uh, occasionally, we can see the amoeba here helping the other one. There was an amoeba here, and you see the parasite helping the other parasite to separate, to make this little baby minita. It's like helping midwife. And it has been in the literature already, and it's still the same thing within your uh, gum when you have the disease. Also, it can uh, adhere to the red cell and get some um, uh, nourishment from the red cell within the biofilm. Or, of course, you have different bacteria, moving bacteria. Those here are spirochetes, okay? But you still have the parasite uh, clearly uh, within this uh, disease. So, the process we want to talk about is feeding on this uh, white blood cell. Because normally you have those neutrophils that should be helping to uh, cure the disease. But what happens when you have the uh, antemoeba parasite is uh, the amoeba is literally um, living on, nourishing on the nucleus of the living white cell. So you see the process is here, it's some kind of a trogocytosis, we've called it exonucleophagy, because it's eating the nucleus and extirpating it from the neutrophil all the time. So you see the nucleus here coming into the inside of the pseudopod, and uh, it goes within, and then after some time it just goes like a little circle here. So this amoeba 
has eaten one nucleus of uh, neutrophil, a second one, and now it is eating a third one. So it's not normal thing to have this parasite within your gum eating your defense cell. So I'll show you some more. You see the nucleus coming inside the parasite. Again, half of it, and it's going to make a little round like this, like the other one here. And then you have almost finished here the exonucleophagy. So it will digest. This is its nourishment. So the amoeba nourishes from uh, your white cell, which is not a normal thing. If you want to look at the movie, you can see how it goes when the amoeba is moving within uh, the interior of the circus. You see the amoeba going this way also with the uropod and the lobopod. So this is very uh, big uh, parasite that is uh, going into uh, your mouth. Um, when it has uh, eaten the interior of the um, white cell, what we see, what we call is uh, like a, a ghost cell. This cell was PMN and it's, it's going to lose its, um, its nucleus. So the enzyme within the neutrophil would be uh, discharging within the uncontrolled, uh, an uncontrolled way into your bone and it will destroy your bone. So what destroy your bone mostly uh, is more like enzymatic um, enzymatic part of the neutrophil uh, with uncontrolled discharge from the, uh, the neutrophil. So if we look like an example to uh, uh, periodontitis during pregnancy, I mean you have preterm, you have problem, you have gum disease, you have uh, bleeding with uh, this uh, uh, pregnancy, uh, time and look at what we can find within the gingival sulcus. So you see those amoeba, they're proliferating, you have the ghost cell that have lost their nucleus, uh, you see a lot of, raw, of bad bacteria moving and you see the parasite moving everywhere within this uh, pus and active uh, microbe. So this is very characteristic of periodontal uh, disease. So if you do uh, have periodontitis in pregnancy, you just have curtage or a surfacage. No way you will remove those bugs. You still have those parasites and probably they will uh, give you uh, most uh, problem known with periodontitis. So this is absolutely uh, incredible to leave those parasites within your gum. And the worst thing is dentists not telling you. So it is very important, dentists should have, all dentists should have those microscopes and look at this uh, parasite within your gum uh, when you have periodontitis. So what we think is uh, uh, this white cell, now neutrophil, when it loses its uh, nucleus, cannot <clears throat> no more, can no more use this neutrophil extracellular trap uh, acting as a barrier to the infection. So it's not possible because the amoeba will annihilate this capacity uh, to initiate immune response. Also, this exonucleophagy process bring, really brings the impossibility of the immune system to resolve the infection during periodontitis and it leads to chronic uh, alteration and bone loss. So what we want to do is uh, see if we can cure and can heal uh, your gum. So normal gum would be like if we measure with a little probe here, uh, we will measure normal sulcus of the gingiva, which would be normally one, two or three millimeters. When you have uh, periodontal disease, you may have four, five, six or more uh, deep uh, sulcus where you have bone loss here. So this would be six millimeter uh, deep, would be three millimeter, three millimeter of bone loss in this situation. So when we look at patient, when we uh, remove those parasites, we, when we cure this uh, periodontal disease, we can see uh, clearly here uh, the bone loss. So you see there's a little uh, darker area. This is vertical bone loss 
And if we go with the probe, we will measure 9 millimeters here. Same thing about 8 or 9 here, same thing here. And we cure this disease removing the parasite. It may take maybe one year to get uh, really comfortable and completely cure. And it takes a little longer to get the bone back. But clearly we see the bone that is coming back okay, uh, after healing. So uh, before bone loss and then after curing the patient, removing the parasite, you see the bone is coming back. Uh, just like this, because you have normal biofilm now, healthy biofilm. So microscope is very important if you want to have healing. Same thing here, you see this tooth with a 10 millimeter pocket here, bone loss just right here. And then at nine months of treatment, you see it's almost gone. And this is a 21 month later, you see the bone has uh, come back uh, just normally because bone from the maxillary is the same as bone from uh, your whole body. There's no difference between bone from the maxillary and bone from the rest of your body. If your bone can, uh, can heal uh, your gum and your bone from the maxillary can heal the same way. So there's no problem, but you have to remove this pathogen biofilm. So we did this examination and treatment for 632 patients and we measured this healing, measuring with the probe and uh, we could say uh, for 630, 600 patients had about uh, closing of all pocket depth. It went to normal at one year, 12 months. We had 100% cure for 600 patients. Uh, only 30 patients one cure 85. It's not very, it's not perfect, but it's clearly a very good, uh, more than what we can find uh, everywhere with all the method. And two patients did not complete. You, you see, those are different clinics, small clinic, large clinic, very large clinic with periodontists doing this anti-parasitic uh, therapy, and the result is um, very good in uh, all those uh, clinics. So, it was said a long time ago, maybe 100 years ago, that we have parasite uh, when you have the gum disease. So it is important dentists tell you about this. It is important dentists has a microscope to show you. So it has uh, been shown by Dr. Paul Kais in the 80s. Uh, <clears throat> normal health would be like those cocci and filaments here, dots and lines and uh, maybe one neutrophil, but not much, it's just like one, but mostly it's cocaine filament like I showed you. When you have gingivitis, it's a little the same, but you have more moving bacteria, here's pyrochetes, um, here you have uh, vibrios, and you have uh, more moving uh, bacteria here, and you have then more neutrophil with infection. So this is gingivitis, but there's no bone loss yet. To have the bone loss, what we have to look is those parasites. So we see those parasites, amoeba, antamoeba, gingivitis, with the moving bacteria. Sometimes you have a second one, trichomonas tenax, which seem to render the thing a little more aggressive and you have plenty of neutrophil, so this may pus within uh, the gum. So we know this for uh, third, more than uh, 30 years, and those studies of uh, Dr. Paul Kais uh, would show with uh, some patient, uh, this is normal, cocaine and filament, dots in line, 100% when you have uh, healthy gum. When you have uh, periodontitis here, you have 100% amoeba. So the correlation is perfect. Uh, when you have the disease, you have the amoeba, and when you are in health, you have no amoeba. Same thing for gingivitis, no amoeba. So the correlation really is uh, extreme. So this way, if we um, target those parasites, it is clear we can go back to health uh, working with the biofilm. So this was said also with the Canadian doctor Trevor Lyons, uh, also in the 18 and uh, the last uh, century in the, in the 80s. 
Uh, he had a book called Introduction to Protozoa and Fungi in Periodontal Infection, which is on our site, uh, periocureiip.com. And you see Dr. Trevor Lyons showed us the amoeba feeding on the, on the nucleus of the white cell, uh, the amoeba feeding on the red cell here, and he clearly showed uh, those amoeba are really uh, parasite, and this is no uh, macrophage or other cell. It was proven in the last 80s. So in his book, in this conclusion, he says, uh, it appears that the vast majority of patients with destructive periodontal lesions are infected with oral protozoa. Elimination of the protozoa is followed by arrest of the disease and resolution, including regeneration of the alveolar bone. So this is very important thing from Trevor Lyons, who practiced during years and years with this uh, microscope and fighting those uh, parasites. So if you look at patient, this patient that has been treated uh, with 17 years ago, and she had implant and she had big problem with periodontal disease, and you see 17 years after, implants are still nice, and you see a lot of bone uh, everywhere. So she was cured uh, 17 years ago. So uh, when she started, she had what we count uh, the millimeter of disease, uh, gum disease in millimeter. So she had 139 millimeter of the uh, problem. So now after uh, 17 years, we see one millimeter of uh, pocket death over three millimeter. So it's about like 99% um, uh, curing of the gum disease, no bleeding, just one little pocket. It's about like those 600 patients we showed you with 100% uh, cure. So this is long term, it's the same thing. When you have learned how to be in health, you know what to do, you know how to prevent periodontal disease. So is entemoebo gingivalis a pathogen? Of course, yes. Entemoebo gingivalis has all the pathogenicity factor to be invasive. So it has lytic activity, adhesion to cells, it uh, does contact those cells and get the nucleus, it has phagocytosis, some form of trogocytosis, which uh, removes the nucleus of the neutrophil, renders it uh, inactive. It has intracellular degradation, will nourish from the neutrophil, and it has NAS, and it's promoting, and it's living with baby form minuta all over and all over if you don't remove it. So we made a study uh, in uh, 2003 in French with the uh, Information Dental Journal. We had 20 patients in our uh, clinic in Quebec and uh, we would see uh, this would be 200 pocket a millimeter of pocket disease and this is after. So most patients when <coughs> treated with this anti-parasitic method with uh, microscopic biofilm checkup all the time we can see that clearly the pockets go almost go away in most uh, patients. So we had at that time 94% uh, curing of this uh, disease for um, mean patient. Uh, also, I want to tell this second uh, parasite we find in periodontal disease, which is called Trichomonas tenax. We found it in 22% in France uh, for a periodontal patient. Um, some say it's no problem, but there was a paper in 2015 by uh, uh, some friends in uh, South America that showed that Trichomonas tenax is the same pathogenicity as Trichomonas vaginalis. So they both are the same, they have the same degree of pathogenicity. So it is not normal to have Trichomonas tenax within your gum, which is one patient on five. So let's have a check with your dentist to see if you have those trichomonas uh, parasite. Here's the movie, what it looks like. You see those two trichomonas here with this flagella. It's like they're fighting together. They're just playing around. This is within your sulcus and it is not normal to keep this into your gum. Of course, 
you have a bone problem and periodontal problem. So if we look at Antemoe Bergengivalis and the second parasite, Trichomonas tenax, uh, most would say it is opportunistic infection. We say no. Uh, normal patients do not have those parasites into their gum. Normal healthy patients never have those parasites. Neither gingivitis patients have those parasites. So those are really specific to periodontal disease, bone loss disease. So opportunistic would be it isn't to the normal patient, but this is false. Normal patient, common cell biofilm has no parasite. Then uh, because of a little gingivitis, you have those white cells, then you get those entemoeba or trichomonas, you uh, may find them on maybe your spouse in the water, in tropical water, uh, sometimes it could be uh, pets, your dog, your cats, most dogs have this uh, periodontal disease, you kiss the dog, you get those parasites within your gum. So, uh, having antemoeba gingivalis and trichomonas tenax really is a real infection, really infection. So we can say now, uh, as diagnostic, if you have periodontal disease, we can say you have periodontal amebiasis, just like uh, intestinal amebiasis. And same thing for trichomonas, we can say you have periodontal trichomoniasis. So don't keep those parasites into your gum. So if we look at other methods like uh, surfacage, uh, phototherapy, laser, uh, we can see in very good uh, school like this one was in Harvard, you have, uh, you have this treatment here, which is not too bad, but it's like very good half cure patient. So when you have surfacage, détartrage, only this, curettes, all this stuff, you have about most of the time 50% cure. So this is half cure and this is still a lot of bleeding. Even after laser therapy, you have a lot of uh, bleeding. So laser is a little better, but it's not cure. Our antiparasite method really showed that you have about complete cure for most of the uh, patient. So uh, antiparasitic method really is uh, ideal to uh, get your, uh, your uh, bone and uh, gum in a healthy situation. So many dentists will talk about stress, genes, gingivitis, smoking, porphyromonas, run bacteria. Um, those are uh, a little risk factor. Uh, dentists and periodontists might say, you're smoking, so you have four more times uh, risk to have this periodontal disease. Okay, we understand this, but being small smoker or having stress or having some genes from the family is really a small factor compared to gingivitis and parasites. So, and the most important thing is, if you're stressed, it's very difficult to remove stress, to get rid of stress, or your genes, you cannot change your genes, or most smoker, it's nice to st stop smoking, but most smoker will continue to smoke, so their, your dentist has no power uh, working with stress, genes, smoking or porphyromonas or little bacteria that they do not really uh, test and remove. So this is no power way of working. If you want to uh, cure gum disease, if you want health, first get rid of, power of the gingivitis. So gingivitis, if you have gingivitis, you have 150 more risk of having periodontal disease. So this is a lot more important. And this here you have power. You can stop your gingivitis. And the second most important thing is those parasites. If you have parasites into your gum, you have 600 up to 9,000 times the risk of having periodontal disease. I mean 600 to 9,000 more risk of periodontal disease. 
So the best thing is work with eliminating gingivitis and eliminating the parasites that lives into your, your gum. So this is very important. So how do we cure this disease? Uh, I'll try to explain. Normally it would take about 12 months to get uh, most patient about cure. Okay, so this is month one, month two, month three. The, normally you have about eight appointments and then we have a three to four month uh, time to have uh, healing happen. So we will check at beginning and check at 12 months. So what we do is we use no toothpaste, we use during the therapy, we use hydrogen peroxide 1%, a patient prepares with uh, some water, he's brushing with this hydrogen peroxide for 8 to 12 months. And then the uh, patient adds some uh, bicarbonate powder with some salt in it. So it's six bicarbonate for one uh, salt you mix and you just put on the gum line two times a day after your uh, brushing. So we start with this and then we add some uh, disinfectant cream uh, based on metronidazole. You can put three times a day. So we do those therapy until you get rid of those parasites. Sometimes you get rid of the parasite at the second, third or four month. If at the four month you don't have you still have those parasites, then we will give you medication, metronidazole normally, systemically um, pills, so uh, you can get rid of the parasite at the fifth month. So when you get at the fifth month, we look at this on the microscope every time we see the patient. At fifth month, you, have, you are back to biofilm, common cell biofilm. This is normal healthy biofilm. So here we do not do any surfacage, nothing, nothing. Just getting rid of the microbe. We don't play into your uh, disease gum. When you have uh, the infection is away, then we remove the calculus with no sharp instrument. We don't want to, um, to um, cause problem to your root because we want it to heal. We want it to have a cicatrization uh, with, it, with your gum. So we only use nice instrument, vibrating instrument, doing detartrage. Uh, very uh, lightly into uh, your gum to remove the calculus if uh, there is. Sometimes it is very aggressive disease, you don't even have calculus uh, within your gum. So uh, the x-ray will, will tell us. And then we take um, third step, let heal. So it takes about four months to have a complete healing. So we try to continue on the high hydrogen peroxide and torrents powder two times or sometimes one, once a day and you go back to a normal toothpaste. And then we take the measure and most patients, like I said, it's about uh, between 95 and most of them 100% cure. Uh, now we do this thing here very important is you have training with little floss and toothbrush. Every month we see you, we do this training of all your month uh, within each appointment. So each appointment is about one hour, but we make sure you are very effective. This really is training to just be like your dentist or your hygienist about uh, cleaning your teeth. So this is important thing. The last one in the antiparasitic therapy is stop this contamination with parasite either direct with water, with spouse, with pets, or indirect with uh, things you can share with other cigarettes and everything. So we teach you how to get rid of this uh, contamination problem. Sometimes it may be that you treat, you have to treat your husband, your spouse or wife, and uh, take care of your dog so it has no uh, more this parasitic disease also. So doing all this, this, and curing with the medication, removing the calculus only when you have no infection, normally result to complete cure. And we've seen for uh, 30 years that patients that have been cured with this uh, therapy, uh, this way they don't get the disease back again. Simple observation with microscope every year, and we make sure you don't have the disease again. 
So, um, if we compare this to uh, normal uh, periodontal therapy with surfacage and surgery, uh, what we can see, and it's easy to understand, if you have pocket like 9 millimeters deep, uh, most dentists or periodontists will uh, do surfacage and wait for two months. So, two months is not long time enough to cure. And all the time, uh, most dentists they don't care about bugs, about microbes within the gum. But this is the main thing of the disease, bugs. Bugs and parasites. So if you just do surfacage and you leave the bugs, you may have a, like a 25% cure at two months. So dentists will say, you only have 20% cure at two months, we don't do the surgery. So they do the surgery and the surgery then gives maybe a 30% uh, effectivity. So uh, after doing surfacage and surgery, you still have uh, half this disease with all the bugs again and it goes back to this uh, problem again. So our technique, removing the bugs, removing the parasite, just make within this one year period, then you go back no bleeding and normal uh, periodontal uh, pocket depth. Okay, so this works all the time, but it takes a little more time. It takes about one year, but no surgery, no pain, just good technique, good uh, hygiene, and removing this parasite with disinfectant and maybe some uh, antiparasitic drug to make sure it is perfect. So our result would be for those four patients I show here, they have 325 millimeter of pocket death, of disease pocket. It goes back to four. This one's 150 to go back to four. This one, 95, goes to zero. This little disease, beginning, 39, 39 millimeter of disease, it goes back to zero millimeter of disease. So most patients are no bleeding anymore and have no more pocket death. So it does work. It does work with the microscope. But now your dentist has to learn how to do this. So he has to learn uh, what is a neutrophil when he looks at the microscope. This is a neutrophil with little dots in here. This is the nucleus. So we have one neutrophil, two neutrophil, three neutrophil. This is infection, four neutrophil here. So you have to understand this. You have to recognize the parasite. This is a parasite here, an amoeba, Antamoeba gingivalis, with the typical nucleus here. And sometimes, when it starts healing, you may see those macrophages coming in. But those macrophages are really different, and you see the uh, nucleus, which is a uh, really big oval. So you cannot, uh, you really cannot uh, mistake those two if you have a little bit of uh, training. So we are clear as we showed at the beginning, this is an uh, Antamoeba gingivalis parasite. So we've made this book some uh, years ago. It's in French, in English and in Spanish now. So in English it is called To Kiss or Not To Kiss. And this book is made for patient. Uh, it still can be uh, read by a dentist, they will uh, learn a lot in it, but most patients they appreciate to understand how this disease happened to them. So you have it all in here. In reality, it's like a little fun to read, it has some uh, cool parts in it, but you will understand your disease. And mostly what we teach you is health is very typical microbes dots and lines and epithelial cell. When you have gingivitis, you have motile bacteria, pathogen bacteria, and white cell again. So you have infection, but no bone loss. And from the time you get those parasites here, Antamoeba gingivitis, or trichomonas within the pus, within the infection, and you have the amoeba eating the nucleus of the white cell, there you have periodontitis, and then you have bone loss, bone loss, bone loss, and bone loss. So you have to understand, you have to get rid of this, get rid of this, and then go back to healthy biofilm, and then here you can have this cure of periodontal disease. So it takes a microscope, it takes um, 
hospital grade microscope 101,000 magnification and this we do at every appointment uh, many times three to four teeth we have this check it takes about five minutes maybe a little more and just make sure that what we see on the screen and you can see it as patient you can see the screen your uh, biofilm every appointment and make sure this is normal so this one is like cure patient with epithelial cell epithelial cell normal cell and almost no bacteria just one little cochlear bacteria here so this we know uh, and this we think all dentists over the world should have a microscope just like x-ray for um, uh, cavities they can see cavities uh, forming this microscope can tell you at the beginning sometimes you are adolescent and you get those parasites uh, sometimes you're a young adult, 23 years old, 25, you just got married and you got those parasites. You go to tropical water and holidays and you get those parasites. So at the beginning of the disease, this is really easy to cure. Sometimes it takes two or three months, just get rid of those parasites. But don't wait, you have a bone loss. So your dentist should have a microscope and look at you from young teenage adolescent and young adult to prevent the disease this is very important so in conclusion we can really say that entamoe by gingivalis uh, induce this pathogenesis of periodontitis it's like 100 correlation both ways with health and periodontal disease probably this amoeba is the agent that allows the switching from this mild pathology gum gingivitis, no bone loss. It goes from this gingivitis and the amoeba gets in, trichomonasis gets in, and then you have bone disease, bone loss, and periodontitis. So, antemoeba um, gingivitis must be considered a potential invasive pathogen. It is not normal, it is not common cell. It is invasive pathogen in almost all periodontal disease. And it leads to, uh, if you want to treat this disease, you should be able to remove this uh, parasite with our antiparasitic protocol, which is uh, some development of Trevor Lyon's uh, first uh, work. And it does guarantee uh, success. If you remove those parasites, remove those pathogens, it's sure you're going to be a cure of the disease, as long as you still have a little bit of bone to hold your teeth. So leaving the amoeba and the gum disease is really a medical nonsense. It is absolutely foolish to leave those parasites into your gum. So get rid of it if you want to be uh, healthy, healthy for your body and healthy for your gum and bone. So the future we think we can cultivate some amoeba and make some model including the amoeba and get some biopsy histological study uh, and understand this disease but have a look at this uh, parasite activity and have uh, maybe more sophisticated uh, microscope to show the amoeba uh, eating uh, having this exonucleophagy process within uh, the neutrophil and really uh, making this uh, white cell absolutely uh, no, uh, no useful when you have this disease. So I want to thank the uh, dentist that has have worked with uh, us for those uh, study. And um, we can say we still we have about almost 1,000 dentists in um, France now doing this technique with the same excellent result with this microscope and removing those parasites. So we form a group of dentists. Uh, we call Amoeba Group, which is Association Medicale Against um, Oral Infection. So this is our group. We work uh, very hard on this. I want to thank those dentists. We have here in Quebec maybe 20 dentists doing this technique. And we still um, teach this technique uh, wherever we find our uh, name on internet with uh, internet uh, parodontite.com and now in English we have this internet uh, 
Perio Cure IIP for International Institute of Periodontology that you can show your dentist and you can your dentist can learn how to cure gum disease. So thank you for your listening and we hope you have nice gum, nice bone and lovely smile when you are cured from this disease and you're back to health. Thank you very much.